Does anybody have homework questions on Wiley Plus? <laughs> In 3.1, do you know? Yeah, 3.1. <laughs> 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 okay, so this is a kind of a trick question. Does anybody know why every U.S. Um, resident doesn't have a social security number, why there's not a one-to-one -one correspondent. Anybody know why? We have visitors. <laughs> yeah, you can get like green cards, for example. Okay. <laughs> okay. So that's okay. That was kind of a trick. Did they say anything in the hint? That's not very helpful. <laughs> okay. So, anybody have any other questions? Yes. Oh, no, I was just going to say that if anyone, like, the thing that I found out is that, like, Wisconsin numbers start with three. Oh. And then um, numbers that, um, and then numbers that start with six, they're usually from California. Oh, interesting. So the Social Security number does have a little code going on. Yeah. Wisconsin numbers generally start with a three. My son sent me an email to see if my identity had been... Um, scammed and so they said well please enter the last five digits of your social security number and I thought well that's kind of weird what if there's a code like that and they can figure out the first <laughs> the first four so I did not do that okay. anybody have any questions okay let's continue on then in uh, where are we at 3.2 we are looking at matching up sizes of infinity So this is an infinite set. The dot, dot, dot means that we're counting forever. There's no ending to our counting. And you had shown a one-to-one -one correspondence with this set that seems to be one smaller. But you were able to come up with a one-to-one -one correspondence that meant, in fact, they do have the same cardinality. So you'd assign the one to two, the two to three, the three to four, the four to five. So on the surface, this second set that we called A looks like it's one smaller than the natural numbers because the one is missing. However, if we go back to our definition, we can see that there is a one-to-one -one correspondence between the two sets. So the two sets are the same size. So that's kind of, kind of uh, difficult to understand because one of the numbers is missing. However, we came up with a one-to-one -one pairing where None are used twice, <coughs> and none are skipped. And we said that two sets have exactly the same size, <coughs> if and only if there is a one-to-one -one correspondence between them. So that should be in your notes, okay? So the two sets are in fact the same size, even though they're both infinite, and it looks like the one should be smaller than the other. This is called having the same cardinality.
So for the word size, we use the word cardinality and set theory. This is called set theory that we're examining. I spent two semesters on set theory in graduate school. It's my favorite class. Well, let's take a look at another set and see if it's smaller than the natural numbers. So, we have the natural numbers again, 1, 2, 3, 4, etc. And this time, I'll look at a set, I'll call, I'll call 10n, because it's going to be multiples of 10, multiples of the natural numbers times 10, so I'll call that 10n. Now, uh, is 10n inside of n? Are all the numbers in 10n inside of n? Okay, so is, is the number 10 in, in the natural numbers? So number 20 in the natural numbers? If I keep this going, I'm going to get to 20, right? So um, 30s in the natural numbers. All the numbers in this second set called 10n are actually in n. They're all in there. Are all the elements of n, the natural numbers, in the set 10n. Okay, are the numbers, is the number 2 in the set 10n? Is this number 2 in the set right here? No, it's not. No. Okay. Uh, so just on the surface, it looks like the set 10n should be smaller, right? Because 10n has just multiple to 10. In fact, it looks like the set n should be <coughs> 10 times as big. Is that the case, though? Can anybody come up with a one-to-one -one pairing between these two sets? <laughs> Sometimes we list them vertically. In fact, I do that a lot. So I'm going to list the set n, okay? So I'm not going to miss any. I'll just list them all out here. And then I'll list the set 10n over here. And go ahead and use your arrows to indicate a one-to-one -one pairing if that's possible. Okay, so a one-to-one -one pairing you would have None, none are missed, no elements are missed, none are used twice. So use your arrows to indicate a one-to-one -one pairing if there is such a thing. Did anybody assign one to any number? What did you assign one to? Ten. Ten. Okay. Good. And then did you assign two to something? Twenty. Twenty? Okay. Was that your pattern then? A little cross like that? Okay. So when you do that, are any missed? Are any left out of this pattern? 
No, none are left out. Are any numbers used twice? No, none are used twice. So this is, in fact, a one-to-one -one pairing. So when we ask which is bigger, the answer is they're the same cardinality. Neither is bigger. They are the same cardinality, the same size sets. There is a one-to-one -one pairing between the two sets. Remember, we illustrated that with fingers, okay? Each finger on one hand goes with another finger on the other, and that's what we did with the uh, elements in these sets. We found a one-to-one -one pairing because they're the same size, just like my fingers are the same size on each hand, same number of fingers on each hand. So that's kind of counterintuitive. Maybe we better try something a little trickier. How about if we include all the integers? Oh, I, I'm sorry, I mislabeled that. That shouldn't be M. That's all the integers. In fact, there is a letter that stands for all the integers. The mathematicians use a Z with a double bar to stand for all the integers. So the dot, dot, dots to the left means these, these keep going, negative 4, negative 5, negative 6, etc. And the dot, dot, dots to the right means these keep going, 4, 5, 6, etc. But I didn't mean I did mean to include n, so n will be the second set here. Which is bigger? Anybody ever read PG Wodehouse or see a movie by him? Or play or anything? Oh, he's hilarious. He's an English writer. I believe he's passed now, but he wrote in the um, 20th century extensively. He's just hilarious. He wrote in one of his books about the family called Bigger. Now, you have to know a little bit about English language in England to talk about his jokes because he's from England, right? <laughs> so uh, when you say master in England, like... Um, Master Jones or Master George. Does anyone know who you're referring to there in the 20th century there? That would be, that would be the, young, the young lad in the family, the son in the family. Okay, so Mr. So-and-so would be the older one, and Master So-and-so would be the child. Okay, so anyway, Wodehouse has this whole dialogue going on between these people, and the, um, the one says, which is bigger? Mr. Bigger or Mrs. Bigger? Okay, so tell me, which is bigger? Mr. Bigger or Mrs. Bigger? Mrs. Bigger, because she became bigger. Okay, <laughs> which is bigger? Mrs. Master, uh, blah, 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 blah. which is bigger? Mr. Bigger or Master Bigger? Master Bigger, because he was a little bigger. <laughs> <laughs> okay, bad English humor. Okay. <laughs> All right, but what about these sets? Which is bigger? <laughs> You're like, I'm definitely not reading Wodehouse now. <laughs> well, it looks like one set's inside the other again, right? The, the set ends inside the set Z. So what I'd like you to do is to see if you can come up with a one-to-one -one pairing between these two sets. So none, none is left out, and none is used twice. Okay, so we need a one-to-one -one pairing between these two sets. So none are left out, and none are used twice. So it helps, as I mentioned, it helps to put them vertically. So um, list them in such a way that none are left out, and none are used twice. It's easier to list n 
you're going to have to come up with a way to list z so that none are left out and none are used twice. Okay, so once you can get the z listed so you're not skipping any, well then you'll be in business, right? Because then you can make your double-headed arrows. So I'm going to walk around and see how you're doing is that. Remember to try something. When you don't know what to do, try something. You can use a pencil and erase it. So come up with the way to list Z so none are left out and none are used twice. negative three, <laughs> negative two, negative one, like this, and that's a very good start, but we're missing a negative four, negative five, and so on, because negative four and negative five are in there too, and negative six, and so on. So you need a, um, a way that doesn't leave the negative numbers smaller than negative three out. Okay, so I'll let you think about it some more. You need a way to list those without missing any. None are left out. I don't, you can do it. I have no functional training cells. What do you mean? I, I I'm glad to see I'm glad to see you working on it. So they're actually both infinite lists. So they're not actually seven and five. They're, they're um, negative four, 
negative 5, negative 6, and, and so on, and 4, 5, 6, et cetera, over here, and 6, 7, 8, and so on here. So they're both infinitely long, and we need a way to list them without missing any. So let's take care of the 0 right off the bat, and let's let that one go with the 1. Okay. <coughs> And then uh, let's alternate positive, negative, positive, negative, positive, negative. So we need a way to make a list that doesn't miss any. And if we alternate like this, then we have that list. So that's the trick. Okay, then we have a list that we can fix. We have a list that we can fix and set in stone and we have a way to um, match them up. So none of, none of this list is left out because we're alternating between the positive and negative integers, and none are used twice, and we've established a list. So that was, that was a kind of a tricky one. Let's go back to one that's not as tricky. How about we take the... Um, Take the natural numbers the natural numbers and four times the natural numbers. So multiples of four. So both these lists go on forever. Can you go ahead and make a one to one pairing between them, please, and demonstrate that? So I'll come around and see how you're doing with that. Use a vertical list, okay? This one's a nicer one, isn't it? Because it has a smallest number, and that helps a lot. So you can list everything without being concerned about missing any. And again, the dot, dot, dot means it does go on forever. So you can make um, each number in n go with its multiple four times n. Then none are missed and none are used twice in either set. So these kinds of Pairings are something I would expect you to be able to demonstrate on a quiz, that you could make a one-to-one -one pairing between any of the sets that we've looked at this morning. So um, you'll have to be careful with that one with the integers, because that was a little tricky. So you'll have to keep that one in mind. Now you might start to feel like all numbers, all infinite sets have the same cardinality as the natural numbers. But that's not the case, actually. However, the natural numbers do provide a benchmark There's more than one size of infinity, as we'll be seeing in chapter 3, and that's where there was so much uh, contention and 
strife when this step theory was first worked on by George Cantor. But the set of natural numbers provides a particular cardinality that's a benchmark that a lot of sets are equal to that size. And we've been looking at a number of them. And what we saw when we looked at this particular pairing up here, this one-to-one -one correspondence up here, is that in order to make a one-to-one -one correspondence with n, you need a, a way to list you need a way to list the set without missing any. So once you have a way to list a set without missing any, then you can be sure that you can make this one-to-one -one correspondence by just lining up the set of natural numbers with your list. Sorry, I bumped something here. Well, we are going to look for a set that's bigger than the natural numbers. Does anybody have any suggestions of a set that might be bigger than the set of natural numbers? To be bigger would mean that we cannot come up with a one-to-one -one pairing. So the natural numbers are a type of a benchmark size of infinity, but to find a set that was bigger than the natural numbers would mean to find that is impossible to find a one-to-one -one pairing with n. That would, um, we're going to see how we go about doing that. Anybody have any suggestions for some sets that seem bigger than the natural numbers, and then we'll see if we can find a one-to-one -one pairing with them or not. Okay, so looking for suggestions. What sets are bigger than the natural numbers? Or that might be bigger, that appear bigger, even if you're not sure, and then we'll look for a one-to-one -one pairing with them, okay? If you want, you can think about the different sets of numbers that we talked about throughout chapter two. So looking for bigger sets here. Let's just lift off, list off the different sets that we looked at. Um, we looked at the natural numbers. Uh, and today we looked at the integers as well, but we found that those were in fact the same size cardinality as the set of natural numbers. Anybody remember any other sets that we looked at? Which ones? The rational numbers. Oh, those were dense, weren't they? The rational numbers. Okay, let's look at the rational numbers. Those definitely look bigger because those are the set of all the numbers that can be written as fractions where b is not zero and a and b are integers. So the rational numbers do contain all of the integers. As you can see, they're written as 0 over 1, 1 over 1, 2 over 1, 3 over 1. Um, so, so the rational numbers do contain the um, integers. I just listed the natural numbers, but they also contain all the integers. But then there's all these other fractions besides. Any number that can be written as a fraction. And all, all the negatives, okay? So we have a challenge. We have a challenge. Can we list all the fractions without missing any? Because if we can list them without missing any or using any twice, then we'll have a way to pair them up with the natural numbers. 
Let's see if we can do that. Well, zero is always a stickler, so let's stick with zero in the middle. You'll need almost a full page for this. In fact, I'm going to spread this out here. Okay, so I'm going to put zero in the middle, and that's going to be our starting point. And then we're going to make a column of fractions with a denominator um, that increases. So first I'm going to put 1 over 1, then I'm going to put 1 over 2, then I'm going to put 1 over 3, 1 over 4, 1 over 5, and then I'll go dot, dot, dot. So this is all the fractions that have a 1 in the numerator, and then the denominator gets 1 larger as we go up. And then I'm going to make a second column with all the fractions that have a 2 in the numerator. So I have 2 over 1, 2 over 2, 2 over 3, 2 over 4, 2 over 5, and so on. Okay, um, now I'm going to take all the fractions that have a 3 in the numerator. So 3 over 1, 3 over 2, 3 over 3, 3 over 5, and so on. And now all the fractions that have a 4 in the numerator. And the dot, dot, dot means that these keep going on forever, going um, bigger and bigger numbers in the bottom okay, as we go up. And now I'm going to go dot, dot, dot to the right and dot, dot, dot on each row. So this represents an infinite grid, but I can find any positive fraction in my grid. So, for example, if I'm looking for 9 tenths, 9 tenths, I go to the ninth column and the tenth row up. If I'm looking for 100 divided by 101, I go to the 100th column and I go up to the 101st row. So I've listed every single fraction. Uh, does anybody see a little bit of an issue going on here though? Hmm. Yes? Because there would be like fractions in between with fractions. We've actually covered those. So all the fractions that are in between fractions will be able to be written like a fraction. And so that's a good point. There are fractions in between every fraction, but we have them in the list. So whenever anybody comes up with a fraction in between fractions, say the fraction in between is 7 twelfths, well, 7 twelfths is in here because it would be the seventh column, the twelfth row up. Uh, there is another issue that we're going on, though. Remember, our goal here is to make a list where every fraction is listed. And none are used twice. Well, let's go in the negative direction, and you can think about it while we do that. So we're going to make the same pattern going in the negative direction. So I'll make a, a column where all the numerators are negative 1. And then I'll put a dot, dot, dot at the end, meaning this goes on forever. And then I'll do a column with a negative 2 in the numerator. So negative 2 over 1, negative 2 over 2, negative 3 over 2, negative... Oops, I did it backwards. I got, I got my pattern mixed up. There. Okay. Okay. 
So negative 2 over 3, negative 2 over 4, negative 2 over 5, dot, dot, dot. Another column with negative 3 in the numerator, negative 3 over 1, negative 3 over 2, negative 3 over 3, negative 3 over 4, negative 3 over 5, negative 4, And I'm just going to put little dots here to show that this pattern continues. So now I have all the positive fractions listed and all the negative fractions listed. They all have a, a place I can find in this infinite grid. But did anybody see what the issue is that we have a little problem with? Anybody see that problem <coughs> going on here? <coughs> Well, I listed some twice. Who sees some that are listed twice? Some fraction, yes. Um, negative 2 over 2 and like 3 over 1, negative 1. Good. Negative 2 over 2 is the same as negative 1. Negative 1 over 1 is the same as negative 1. Negative 3 over 3 is the same as negative 1. Any other fractions you see listed twice? Any other numbers listed twice? Yes. Good. Negative 1 over 2, negative 2 over 4. These are both the same value. Okay, so here's how my strategy is going to overcome that. What we're going to do is we're going to make a spiral starting at 0 in a way to list these. But when I come to one that's duplicated, instead of listing it, I'll cross it off. So I have 0, 1 over 1, negative 1 over 1, 2 over 1, Ah, but then I come to 2 over 2, which is the same as 1, so we cross it off. 1 over 2, negative 2 over 1, and here is a negative 1. Negative 1 over 2. So we just spiral through like this, so I'm going to catch all of them, but if I come to a duplicate, I cross it off. So 4 over 2, that's the same as 2. 4 over 4, that's the same as 1. 2 over 4, that's a duplicate. So now I have a way to list these without missing any. The rule is to, uh, first we list our natural numbers. That we're trying to make a one-to-one -one correspondence with. And then we list the um, rational numbers, which actually have a name called Q for quotient. So the um, Q with a double bar stands for the rational numbers, so you can you can put that at the top of your page here if you want, where we have rational numbers, the set of rational numbers. It's Q for quotient. Okay. okay, so now we have a way to list all the rational numbers without missing any or duplicating any. We start with 0, and then we go to 1 over 1, which is 1. You can just write 1 if you want. Uh, then we go to negative 1 over 1. Then we go to 2 over 1. Then we go to 1 over 2, because we skipped the 2 over 2, so now we go to 1 over 2. Then we go to negative 2 over 1. So this spiral goes on forever, and we'll catch all of the fractions, so we won't miss any fractions. And because we're making the provision that we're going to cross out any as we come to them that are duplicates, we won't duplicate any either. So our 1 to 1 correspondence follows this pattern. This is not the only way you can make the one-to-one uh, -one correspondence, but I thought this one was a pretty nice way to do it. Yes? Um, I was going to ask a question, but I realized it was going to be dumb, so I stopped myself. <laughs> well, if you figure out the answer on the way to the question, that is best. You figure out yeah. your own answer. Yeah. Anybody have any questions?
So all the sets that we found so far are the same cardinality. The natural numbers, the integers, and the rational numbers. They're all the same size because they can all be put into a one-to-one -one pairing with the natural numbers. So this is very surprising, very counterintuitive because the natural numbers is within the integers and the natural numbers within the rational numbers and yet it can be put into a one-to-one -one pairing with that. So some of the interesting things that happen with infinity and I'm going to show you another interesting thing that happens with infinity. We're going to do an experiment. The experiment lasts one minute. <laughs> and here's how the experiment works. Okay, we have this barrel. And we have a trough feeding into the barrel. The trough is feeding in ping pong balls numbered beginning at one, two, three, four, dot, 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 because they go on forever. This is supposed to be a barrel. You probably can draw a better barrel than me, okay? Okay. So here's what we have. We have an infinite number of tasks to accomplish in the one minute time that we have on the clock. We have a timer going. So the time, the one minute is going to be split up into um, sections. The first <coughs> time slot will be half of the minute. The second time slot will be half of the remaining time, which is a fourth of the minute. The third time slot will be half of the remaining time that's left, so one eighth. The fourth time slot will be one sixteenth of a minute. So you're going to have to be going very fast here, faster and faster and faster. And uh, these have, we have infinite tasks and we have infinite time slots if we just keep cutting the remaining time in half. So we can do this. Now what happens during um, this time slot is that balls are added to the barrel. So during the first minute, balls 1 to 10 are added to the barrel. I'm, I'm sorry, during the first time slot, balls 1 through 10 are added to the barrel. And then during that same one half minute, you reach in and remove ball number 1. Then comes the next time slot. In the 1 fourth minute, after that, in the second time slot, balls um, 11 to 20 are added to the barrel, and you reach in and remove ball 2. And then in the 1 eighth of a minute that comes next, you put in balls 21 to 30 and remove ball 3. In the fourth time slot, balls 31 to 40 are added, you take out ball 4. In the fifth time slot, balls 41 to 50 are added, and you take out ball 5. And this just goes on, and you're going faster and faster and faster because you have half as much time remaining for each task. But that's okay. It's an experiment where I'm granting you infinite powers of speed. Okay? <laughs> so you can go faster and faster and faster and get this done, and then bing, the minute's over. So the question I have for you is, how many balls are in the barrel after one minute? So I'd like you to work in your groups and decide how many balls are in the barrel after one minute. So in groups of two to four, four or five if that's better. Raise your hand if you're stuck or if you have a question. How many balls are in the 
in the barrel. You have superhuman skills, you're getting infinite tasks done in one minute. balls in the barrel. Tell me the number on one of the balls in the barrel, okay? In your group. Number five? No, that one got taken out, didn't it? That got taken out in the fifth task. <coughs> one thirty second. 
Could it be the ball number 100? <coughs> did we do 100 tasks? We did infinite tasks. You have superhuman powers and you did infinite tasks in one minute. So you did do 100 tasks. <coughs> so it's not the ball labeled 100. Okay, I'll give you a hint. This is a red herring. Who knows what a red herring is? Oh, it, it leaves you off the trail. Suppose all the balls are in the barrel to start with. Okay, then take that into account. Suppose all the balls are in the barrel to start with instead of added incrementally. And then decide. Zero balls are in the barrel. Okay, so are you no, because there you did infinite tasks. There's a one-to-one -one correspondence between your infinite task and the ball that was removed. This was a red herring to just kind of throw you off, and it does throw you off, doesn't it? It's weirdly, weirdly phrased. So things that happen with infinity are quite interesting. I'll see you in class on Friday. What was our what was our Canvas activity? Did anybody look for 3.2? I don't know. I don't remember. Oh, we st oh yeah, we answered the initial question of the day. So here, let me remind you what that is. I think I actually wrote it down in the Canvas activity. How much bigger is the set of rational numbers than the set of natural numbers? You don't have to answer this part. Okay. How much bigger is the set of rational numbers than the set of natural numbers? What's the answer to that? They're the same size, the same cardinality, right? Okay, good, same cardinality. So you can answer that with a sentence, okay? I'll see you in class on, on uh, Friday. Thank you. What if I feel like I didn't write it down? Oh my I think I wrote it in Canvas too. Oh, okay. I'll just answer in Canvas. Yeah.